Today, I'm going to show you how to install this Emporia EV Charger Level 2. The connector is the J1772. The amperage can go up all the way to 48 amp, as you can see here. So, you'll definitely need something as big as a 50 amp breaker. A quick summary, this thing is awesome, and the app works flawlessly. Plus, there's the benefit of getting this into Home Assistant. That way, you can control it remotely based on automations as well. For my setup, I did it a little bit funky. Here it is installed in my garage. The garage is puny, tiny. There's no way my car can fit in. So what happened is that I have the hard wire coming in right here. This is the 6 gauge wiring that's going into the breaker box. It feeds into the Emporia on this side. I have it hardwired. That way I can go up all the way to 48 amp. By default, this thing is not hardwired and I don't want to deal with the plugs. So that's why I hardwired it straight into the box. And then on the other side, this cable is where you'll be feeding it into your car. Another reason why I don't want this charger outside in the driveway is because I live in the ghetto. I definitely don't want people messing with this Emporia EV charger. By the way, when you receive this in the box, it is very heavy. And that's because of the super heavy wiring cable right here. The white box by itself is super light, maybe less than like 3 pounds. It feels like a toy. The whole thing is made out of plastic. And it does feel cheap, but that's irrelevant. It looks great though. Here it is on the outside. The hole going outside is about 3 quarter of an inch. This black piece right here is 3D printed, so it helps with the waterproofing further. Not that I needed it, but it looks much better with this uh, trim on. Here's a quick look of my whole circuit breaker. We're not going to go in depth over the insulation of this uh, 50 amp breaker. That's because this is not really my expertise and I don't want to get in trouble for giving you bad advice. Chances are you definitely need a 200 amp panel. My panel was filled to the brim and there was absolutely no way for me to fit this 50 amp in. So the best thing I did was find these uh, 15 amp circuit breakers. These 15 amps are usually for the lights and that's what I did. I found out that these are going to the lights. So for instance, on the third floor where nobody really sleeps and these LED lights uses very little amp. I combined some of the lights together to make space for this dual pole 50 amp breaker. I'm going to share a YouTube video that will give you an idea on how to combine. My circuit breaker is from Murray, which is no longer in business. And I had to do some research to find out that Siemens breaker are just as good and compatible with the uh, Murray panel. Once I was able to install the uh, 50 amp breaker in, then I ran the 6 gauge 3 wire conductor. Honestly, you really don't need 3 wire conductor. You can get away with 2 conductor. And you'll see later on why. When you remove the charger from the box, this is what you would see. You need to remove this um, bracket. So go ahead and release 4 screws. The screws are Phillips. Next up, we're going to remove the front cover. So go ahead and release all of these hex. There's about 8 hex screws versus the 4 Phillips in the previous photo. After you release the hex screws, you can go ahead and remove the front cover. But be careful, the front cover is connected to the box via these slim wires right here. So go ahead and grab the connector right here and remove it carefully. Alright, since we're not using the plug, we're going to hardwire that in. We're just going to remove the plug. So go ahead and release this thing right here, this whole cable right here, by removing these three screws. One, two, three. You know what? While we're at it, if you want, you can go ahead and remove this cable here as well on the right hand side. If you're going to keep the charger in the garage and with the charging plug in the driveway. This is what it looks like with the NEMA plug removed, and I'm about to remove this as well. Mounting the bracket onto the wall is fairly easy. My whole garage is um, probably made of limestone. So first I had to install this um, wooden panel, and then I installed the brackets. Alright, here's the final layout of all the wiring before we put the front cover back and install this onto the wall. On the left hand side, here's my 6-3 cable. You got the uh, load 1 and a load 2. These two combined add up to 240 volts. Here's the ground wire going into the ground position. If you notice, there's absolutely no white wires. There's no neutral whatsoever. This is why I mentioned earlier, you can get away with 6 gauge 2 conductor. On the right hand side, I ran the uh, cable that's connected to the plug that's going into the car. I ran that from the driveway through the hole back into this charger. Now that we're all done with the wiring, go ahead and put the cover back on, install the 8 hex screw back into place, and then mount it onto the wall using the 4 Phillips screw, and you're done.
included in the package is also this bracket to um, mount onto the wall and then that holds all of the uh, cable. The cable is pretty long, I would say maybe about uh, 15 feet or more. And as mentioned earlier, I live in the ghetto, so underneath here is the uh, vibration sensor. That way, as soon as somebody touches this, I get an alert immediately. You know what, while we're outside, let me show you this NFC car. By default, when you plug the charger into your car, it charges the car immediately. That's very convenient, but also not a good idea if you live in the ghetto. That's why in the app, there is an option to flip it to on or off, to enable charging or disable charging. Myself, I personally don't like using the app because I hate taking my phone out and find the app and then tap, tap, tap to get it working. That's why I installed this NFC car. To charge your car, all I have to do is plug the charger into the car, take out my phone to scan this NFC tag, and then it starts charging. Much, much easier than playing around with the phone and finding the apps. All right, now that we're done with the hardware installation, let's check out the software. Go ahead and search for Emporia Energy and install the app. Once you open the app up, it's going to ask you if you want to create an account, and I highly recommend that you create an account using your email. The reason being, if you're going to use Home Assistant, and later on you add it into your HA machine, it's going to be very cumbersome with Google or Apple or with anything. So the best thing to use is your own email account. Oh yeah, you have to give it your real email account because they're going to send you something to verify that the email is legit. So go ahead and spend some time to create the account. Once you sign in, go ahead and accept the terms. There's absolutely no way you can decline. Go ahead and choose the Emporia EV Charger from the list of choices. Click on the EV Charger again. Go directly to Setup. Click on OK. Make sure that your GPS is on and then click on OK. Allow while using the app. You should be standing within 5 feet of it and it will detect your machine as here. Go ahead and tap on it. Now it will want to jump onto your Wi-Fi network. Oh yeah, this thing is only 2.4 GHz. So if your mesh network or if your Wi-Fi router is only 5 GHz, then this Emporia EV charger will not work. Go ahead and sign in your Wi-Fi access point. It's going to connect to your Wi-Fi network, and then it's going to connect to Emporia server. Go ahead and give it a name and the name of your vehicle. It really doesn't matter. And then click on Save. Right now, we're using 50 Amp, so go ahead and click on 50 Amp, and then click on Save. Every time you change the amperage, it will ask for a pin. So go ahead and assign it a four digit pin. It can be anything you want. It's going to check if there's an updated firmware and then it will install it. For some reason, it could not update the firmware. So I went back to the breaker and flipped the switch to the off button and then flip it back on. Checkbox, I've power cycled the EV charger and then click on continue to the next setup. You are now all done, so let's click on let's go. Overall, the app is super easy to use, so I'm not going to go over that. What I do want to show you is the enable or disable charging. So go ahead and click on the menu button right here on the upper left hand corner. Click on EV chargers. Choose your charger. And here, the giant button, you can tap it on or off. So right now it's off, meaning if you plug the charger into a car, it will not charge. Let's tap on it again. And now it's turning on. The reason why it takes so long to turn on is because it's talking to the cloud. Now you understand why I can't stand the cloud. But luckily, even though it's offline, we can still control it locally. And once you're done charging, you can always flip it to the off position so that no strangers can use your uh, electricity. All right, let's talk about Home Assistant. If you like me, you want this to be integrated into your hub, your Home Assistant hub. So go ahead and click on HACS, search for Emporia, and if you don't, go click on the three dots, click on Custom Repositories. Copy and paste this link in. The category will be Integrations, and then click on Add. There we go, we can see it now, so click on it, and then Install, or in this case, Download. Now go ahead and go to Settings, Integrations, Add Integrations, Search for Emporia. Click on it, 
And for some reason, it takes forever. I don't know why. Maybe it's trying to connect to the Emporia server. Once it does connect though, give it the email address and the password associated with that account. Click on Submit and assign it an area if you want. Click on Finish. Now let's jump to Emporia device. Here you can see all of your power usage as well as the toggle button to enable charging or disable charging. Using the toggle switch, I tie that to the NFC card that you saw earlier. That way, whenever I scan the car, it will flip the switch to on to enable charging the car. Alright, hopefully this video helps you with installation or at least give you an idea on how to install the circuit breaker, running the lines to this charger, running the outside cord to the driveway. That way, the charger itself is fully protected no matter what. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.